when you make outrageous statements on the internet, you've kind of got to expect that some people will disagree with you, some people will question you, and some people will just outright say you're wrong. That's fine as long as you're willing to accept that and willing to have a discussion with the people who are at least being reasonable about it. I hate it when people do post outrageous things and just run away as soon as anyone questions their methodologies or their thought process. Three weeks ago, I saw a post that said that Rust was actually 200 times cheaper than Python to run. I'd heard that Rust was incredibly good, but I was a bit dubious, so I thought I'd check it out. They'd actually given links to their code, so that's normally a really good sign. When I looked at the code, I noticed that the Python looked like it was doing two and a half thousand times more calculations than the Rust code was. Hardly a fair comparison. I replied to the comment. The response that I got from the author was, shall we say, not what I expected. I was told that I was a nitpicking Rust denier who had no idea how code actually worked. If he'd acknowledged the bug and said that he'd fix it or rerun it, the tests, or even just say that he was looking into it, then I would have been happy. But since he went on the offensive, I decided to rerun his Python test, but obviously fix his code first. Make sure that you stick around to the end of this video as I'll be giving you my process for picking the perfect language for you to use. What I found in my testing was that Python was actually slightly slower than Rust, but by a fraction of what Noah claimed. I posted my results and asked if he wanted a call to try and create a fair test, and he blocked me from LinkedIn. Blocked by a university professor because I noticed that there were some bugs in his code. This got me really pissed off. So I decided to do this testing justice. I retested everything to give people the real data on how different languages perform in Lambda. If you want to see the code and the raw results from my tests, I have a GitHub documenting all of this including how you can actually run all of these tests yourself to verify that I'm not making anything up. I started with the code that Noah had provided. I'd already tested the Python, so let's move on to the Rust. When I finally got Noah's Rust code running, I found something interesting. He was claiming that Rust was running 100 parallel threads, and that's why it was faster. But actually, it only ran one. Since the tests are at 128 megabytes and 512 megabytes of RAM, Lambda only actually has a fraction of a CPU thread anyway. So I just refactored the Rust and the Python to do 25 series loops of the calculation. I also added JavaScript to the test just as another reference point. Now that we had three languages actually doing the same amount of work, my first set of test results had Python and Rust neck and neck with JavaScript a few milliseconds behind. I was documenting this whole process on LinkedIn and someone gave me a tip for how to optimize the Python code. This resulted in a three times speed up, making Python by far the fastest language, even when using the lowest memory settings. At the same time, someone pointed out that the load that we were doing, which was summing numbers from one to 10,000, wasn't a very good computational task and not very realistic. They told me about programminglanguagebenchmarks.com where you're able to load test against a load of existing code snippets of different languages. This had three massive benefits. First, we were using some more standardized performance tests, which is always nice. We also had the test results to compare against from the website although these were done on hardware, so there's a little bit of difference. And finally, there were code examples for all of the languages for all of the different tests. No more blaming my ability to write Python or Rust for the slow times. The tests I went with was first the binary tree search. I took the best performing code for Python, Rust, and JavaScript, and just modified it slightly to add a handler so it be, could be called from a Lambda function. In this test, it turns out that Rust was, in fact, three times faster than Python at every single memory level. Interestingly, there was no performance increase going above 1.8 gigabytes of memory. 
That's because the code wasn't written to have any parallelization, so that having more than one CPU thread wasn't beneficial. I then decided to test the JavaScript example, fully expecting it to be way slower. At 512 megabytes, it actually turns out to be slightly faster than Rust, which really surprised me. But at 1.8 gigabytes, JavaScript was 5.4 times faster than Rust. I couldn't quite believe it. So I ran the whole JavaScript test suite again, and I got the same results. How can JavaScript be the slowest in Noah's tests and the fastest in this binary tree example? This kind of brings me on to the higher level question. Should you or your company spend your time and effort trying to find the optimal language to use in your projects? If you're coming from a developer's perspective, your questions are more likely to be, will I earn more if I become a Rust developer? And how hard is it to get a job? Comparing the available online jobs for Rust, there are almost none compared with Python. If I would earn more, is it worth the time to learn a new language, to find a new job, or actually could I earn more by just becoming better at my job and progressing up the career ladder? Now, for companies, which language to use is a bit different. Now, it's all about how to make more profit. So let's say you have a system that does a very computationally complex task. Something like ingesting all of the data for a day of sensor information from a piece of equipment in a factory. Then doing some predictive analysis on which bits of equipment need to be maintained, fixed or replaced. If you were monitoring, say, 30,000 different bits of equipment and each calculation was the same complexity as our binary tree test, then here are the costs for running those calculations in each of the languages. If you'd gone with Python, then you'd have $707 of AWS Lambda bill. Rust, you have just 241, but JavaScript, you'd have $47.72. Moving from Python to Rust would save you $466 per month, that's not quite the whole picture. There are loads of other costs that come with building software and software products. The largest cost is usually actually the developer time. So that's the salary times the time to build a new feature. Comparing the average Rust salary to the average Python salary, you'll actually be paying 30% more for every single developer. But plus, Python is a higher level language which means it's usually quicker to write the same functionality. Python also has millions of developers working with it every day. This means there are thousands of packages for you to use. There's a huge community for your developers to learn from and millions of Stack Overflow uh, answers for people to copy and paste. All of this means that Python is almost certainly going to be way faster to write a new feature. Combining these two factors means that your business could be spending up to twice as much to develop the same function in Rust versus if you'd done it in Python. If it takes your team of four Python developers a month to implement a new feature, then that's going to cost $33,000. If you hired a Rust developer to build the same solution for you, you could end up spending twice as much just to save $466 a month. Paying back that extra 33 grand would take over 70 months in Lambda savings. Not to mention being able to get features out faster and iterate is really important for the growth of your company. And it doesn't even address the huge elephant in the room, that JavaScript was still 5.4 times faster than Rust and JavaScript developers are even cheaper than Python dev. This means building your solution with JavaScript, you'd be spending about the same, but you'd actually be saving $660 every single month on Lambda cost. But the only reason we actually know any of this is because that we actually tested all three languages. If you're designing a brand new feature, you don't have the time or the money to write the whole feature 
in three separate languages to see which one is best. So here's my process for choosing the optimal software language for your solution. Pick a sensible language for your use case. Python, Rust, JavaScript, or even Go are all sensible languages to use. Now that you've chosen a sensible default language, focus on solving the problems your customers have, as this is actually what is gonna help you generate income for the business. If you do end up growing massively and one single Lambda ends up costing you $200 a month, then it's time to start investigating. Set aside four hours of one developer's time and try some different memory configurations or look for ways to optimize your code. This isn't looking at rewriting into a new language, but just trying to optimize the language you already have. But why $200 a month? Well, at that point, if you can optimize it by 30%, then that's enough to justify those four hours of development time. If you get to the point where one Lambda is now costing you more than $500 a month, then you've got a bigger decision to make. Is the cost of rewriting this Lambda into a new language worth the possible cost savings? And rewriting isn't the only cost you'll have. Using multiple different languages in your code base means you have to hire developers who can either code in both or two different teams that can do one language each. And both of those get expensive. Plus, if you've got a developer switching between languages, it slows down development and puts bottlenecks in your system. These extra costs often mean it isn't even worth it if you even halve the cost of your Lambda. Saving $250 a month on your Lambda to spend an extra 30 grand a year on a developer who can code in both languages really doesn't make much sense. So are there any use cases where it's worthwhile to rewrite Lambdas into a new language. Maybe at some scale, it starts to make sense. Let's work out the costs for a dedicated team to handle these high cost lambdas. Before you go and hire any new staff, you'd probably be a good idea to hire a contractor to rewrite one of your most expensive lambdas to accurately find out what difference in performance can be made by rewriting the lambda. It would be terrifying to hire a whole new team just to find out that they only actually save you 5% on your AWS bill. If there is a noticeable difference in the performance, then you might decide to switch three Python developers for three Rust developers, increasing your employment cost by 90 grand a year or $7,500 a month. So let's say the contractor finds a 30% performance boost and cost saving on your Lambda bill. To make it worthwhile, you need to be saving over $7,500 per month. At 30% saving, you need to be spending $25,000 per month on lambdas that can be optimized to make the equation balance. Using our equipment example again, you'd need to be monitoring almost 1 million pieces of equipment to make it worthwhile, which is 1.5 billion gigabyte seconds, the same as running 578 lambdas with one gig of RAM 24 seven. At this point, it's almost certainly cheaper to teach your team how to use ECS and run some of your most used functions in Fargate than it is to actually refactor your Lambda into a new language. We're gonna have to save that whole topic for another video. We've talked a lot about cost in this video and if you really want to understand how serverless compares, with more traditional architecture, then you need to watch this video here where we discuss the true cost of ownership with serverless and software architecture.